Stacy and I are glad to be back with you again for this week's Saturday stream. And I can't believe that we're down to just a couple yeah. weeks left in the month of May, but we're so thankful for all of you that have tuned in each week and have been watching our videos. And we pray that you've been blessed by these. Um, so we've been going through Deuteronomy 6 and looking through purposeful priorities and five things that we can really prioritize in our life as we re-engage with society and kind of go back to our new normal and things that we really pray that we can focus on um, just no matter how busy life gets again. Um, so two weeks ago, we talked about the priority of loving God with all our heart, soul, and might. And this past week, we talked about um, just being purposeful in training our children diligently and teaching them diligently. And so I hope that you've been prayerfully considering what that looks like in your life and how we can really prioritize these as time goes on. So this week, we're going to move on in Deuteronomy 6, and we're going to look ahead and see um, what Moses continued to challenge the Israelites with um, before they prepared to enter the Promised Land. So let's look again in Deuteronomy 6, verses 10 through 13. And it says, So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build, houses full of all good things which you did not fill, cisterns which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. And when you have eaten and are full, then beware, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You shall fear the Lord your God and serve him and shall take oaths in his name. And so ladies, as you can see in that scripture, the children of Israel were um, preparing to go into this promised land. And you know, the promised land was a place of instant prosperity. And so Moses knew that um, there would be dangers involved mm -hmm. with that. And so he cautioned them to cultivate a grateful heart and the importance of that. And you know, we also live in a land of prosperity. And so that's what we wanna focus on this week is that um, priority of cultivating a grateful heart. And so, like I said, the things that we've talked about the last two weeks of loving God with all your heart and soul and might, and then teaching your children diligently, you know, these may seem like priorities that, you know, you would automatically think of and it would seem normal while, you know, cultivating a grateful heart may not seem like one that you would have automatically thought of, but it is so necessary as believers that we do this. Um, I love what Nancy Lee DeMoss has said in one of her books. She said, um, cultivating a thankful heart is a safeguard against becoming bitter, prickly, and sour. A grateful child of God can't help but be a joyful, peaceful, radiant person. She goes on to say, I truly believe a grateful spirit rooted in the soil of God's goodness and grace will radically impact how you view and respond to everything in your life. You know, I think that's so true. A grateful heart really impacts everything in our life. So I don't know about you ladies, but for me, those words just describe what I want to be. Mm -hmm. I want to be joyful and peaceful and just a radiant person that shines God's light to others. And so that's what we want to look at. And so based on this passage, Stacy, can you share with us um, just some ideas of how we can do that. Yeah, I think I think Moses is very clear here in a couple of ways that we can cultivate a grateful heart. The first thing that I think that we see here is that Moses tells the children of Israel, recognize that it is God. Uh, don't forget that it is God who has done what is going to be done. Um, it says here in verse 10, when the Lord your God shall bring you into the land. It was going to be God who did that. He's the one who brought them out of slavery in Egypt, and he would be the one who would settle them in the promised land. And he said, you know, don't forget that. Moses knew firsthand exactly how forgetful the children of Israel were. Mm -hmm. You know, he was with them um, when God had brought them out of slavery in Egypt. Um, it was only three days that they got into the uh, wilderness and they began to murmur and complain mm -hmm. and even said, we wish that we were back in bondage. I mean, he, he knew firsthand how easy it was going to be for them to forget that it was God who had brought them there. And so he said, don't forget. And sadly, we see later on that they did indeed forget, even yeah. though he cautioned them um, not to forget. You know, we see later on in Deuteronomy uh, 32 verse 18, it says, you were unmindful of the rock that bore you, and you forgot the God who gave you birth. You know, it seems unbelievable that we could forget that it is God who has gotten us where that we are, but clearly it's very easy for us to forget. Um, Psalm 78 11 says, they forgot his works and the wonders that he had shown them. And then Psalm 106 21 says, they forgot God, their savior, who had done great things in Egypt. 
it, it is so easy for us to forget that it is God. You know, it's no different for us. We can't for one second believe that wherever we are, wherever we find ourselves, whatever prosperous situation we find ourselves in, no matter how much wealth we've accumulated, whatever opportunities have opened for us, we can't for one second think that that's because we did that. Right. We have to remember that it is God who has given us everything that we have. It is God who has opened the doors of opportunity. It's God who's given us the ability to do the things that we do. And so we just cannot forget that it's God. And, and Moses was telling them, don't forget that. Um, we have to have, um, we, we do have a tendency oftentimes to look at what we have accomplished mm -hmm. because we live in a very, very self-reliant culture. You know, we're very self-made, and so we tend to look at what we have, and we tend to be, become prideful um, when we look at what we have. And that kind of mindset will never cultivate a heart of gratitude. It's the exact opposite. And so instead, we need to look at all that we have, and we need to realize that it's all just from God. God did that for us. It's all because of how good he has been. You know, Katie, one of the best ways for us to prevent pride and to cultivate thankfulness is to recognize that it has always been and always will be God. And so we need to do that as ladies. So, you know, I want to think about that in practical ways. You know, what does it look like for us to, to, to recognize that it is God who has been there and who has done this and done everything that we have and, and everything, everything that we are? What does that look like? Yeah. Well, some things that I really try to do, one thing that I really do is um, I just try to be very, make a conscious decision daily. Mm -hmm. You know, that I'm going to do that. I want to remember his blessings. So I brought along my prayer journal to show y'all. Mm -hmm. And a really good friend of mine made this for me. And what I love about it is it has different tabs in here, as you can see. Um, one for each member of my family, one for my church, just different things. But I love that the first three sections are adoration, mm. thanks, and praise. And that's intentional. Mm. That's because before I go to the Lord with more of my needs and more of my wants and, and things I just want to see happen, I want to make sure to remember mm. what He has done for me, mm. how He has placed me, where I'm at, and the things that He has done. You know, mm -hmm. And so be conscious about doing that and really try to make that choice daily. Um, another thing that I think is really important is to memorize and meditate on scripture. You know, as believers, we are no different than anybody else. We're going to go through times where we struggle. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through times where that, you know, we do have heaviness in our life. But the difference with us is that is an indicator to go to scripture mm -hmm. and be reminded of truth, you know, so that we don't stay in that place of ungratefulness. Scripture is very powerful. Yeah. And so I know in my own personal life, when I'm um, beginning to get an un ungrateful spirit or maybe a critical spirit, or maybe just experiencing, you know, a heaviness mm -hmm. over circumstances that are going on, that is my indication. Go to scripture and be reminded of truth and memorize that scripture. Um, so I know for me, my grandmother, um, our grandmother always encouraged us to read a proverb every day. And while I don't necessarily <laughs> do that, what I do is, as I said, when I'm struggling, I immediately go to Proverbs and Psalms and I will start just reading those truths and being reminded of who God is and what he has done for me and all those blessings. And you know, even just keeping a journal and writing down those verses that have to do with thankfulness, that will just help you so much and memorizing those, you know, when you're going throughout your day and you have a critical thought or you develop a, you know, ungrateful spirit about something, it will help you to remember, no, mm. God, God has put me here. God has, you know, done all this for me and just really center you on truth. Um, Psalm 119.9 says, how can a young man keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word? So mm -hmm. guard against mm -hmm. unthankfulness by memorizing scripture. Um, the next thing that I think is really important is recognizing that gratitude is an overflow of a humble heart. You know, scripture says so much about being humble and how that the Lord is near to the humble. But really, when we have a humble heart, out of that grows thankfulness mm -hmm. and gratefulness and realizing what he has done for us. So um, it's really important to do that. And we need to understand and remember in salvation alone, we've already been giving so much more than we deserve. But God's so rich in his mercy gives us so much mm -hmm. more than that. You know, mm -hmm. so just having that humble heart and asking God to give you a humble heart. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that God will do that. If you ask him for a humble heart, he will give you that. And out of that will, will flow gratefulness yes. and thankfulness and rem remembrance of all that he's done for us. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says, 
So then just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Like mm -hmm. I want to be overflowing with thankfulness and that requires intentionality yeah. to remember. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. You know, the second way we can see here uh, that Moses challenged them was not just to recognize that it was God that had given it, but to also remember God's blessings. Mm -hmm. You know, not only do we want to recognize that it's always been God and always will be God, but we want to remember his blessings because we have so many specific things to be thankful for. You know, um, Moses goes through these next verses here in verses 10 through 12, and he lays out everything that God had done for them or that he was going to do for them. He says, look, he's already brought you out of bondage and he's going to put you into a rich land. You know, he said he is going to give you great cities, which you didn't have to build. He's going to give you houses fully furnished and you didn't have to build them or furnish them. I want one of those. Um, he said he, he gave you wells. You didn't have to dig those wells. He gave you vineyards and olive trees. You didn't have to plant those. He's going to provide enough food that you're going to eat until you are completely satisfied and I love that you know and he what he's telling them is look God is going to richly and abundantly bless you but don't forget those things once you're there because you know we have a tendency don't we Katie to when we um when we the more that we accumulate and we get comfortable in that and mm -hmm. that's just our everyday life we forget to be thankful for those yeah. things we become apathetic to it and so we take it for granted and so we need to remember to um look at and to remember the things that God has done mm -hmm. for us and so we asked some ladies at Fayette to yeah. talk about some things some ways that God has blessed them and to remember some things and so we we want to take just a minute right now and watch and see what they have to say about the ways that God has blessed them. God has been so good to me because he pursued a relationship with me through his son, Jesus Christ. He also has given me a husband and a daughter who encouraged me to always follow Jesus. Good morning. I'm out here in my garden. Uh, the Lord uh, uh, watered it for me already, so I don't have to water it this morning, but I want to talk about some of this goodness for a minute. Uh, I've been home, uh, not been able to go to work, um, and yet there's been several of the ladies that I cleaned for over 30 years are still paying me. Now, I like that. Thank you, Lord. God has been kind to me in um, more ways than I can even begin to count, uh, but if I had to choose one specific way, I would say just the wonderful support system he's given Zach and I here in Fayette County because when we moved here, we did not know anyone, had no friends here, had no family here. And God blessed us with a wonderful church family that has loved us and encouraged us and supported us. God has been good to me by allowing me to slow down, reflect, and spend more time with my family. God has just been so good, and I love hearing from ladies about specific yes. ways that God has blessed them. You know, regardless of what we do or don't have, we all have so much to be thankful yes. for. Just like um, the Israelites, you know, if we live in America, which we all do here, we live in a land of prosperity. Yes, We are rich. We are richer than most places in the world. And so we have to be thankful for, for even just that. I love the story of Matthew Henry. Um, he was an 18th century Puritan preacher. Most of us know him because of his Bible commentaries. They're still very popular today. Um, but one day while living in London, he was accosted by robbers. And I'm sure that was a very traumatic experience, mm -hmm. but I thought it was very interesting what he wrote in his journal about that situation. He said, let me be thankful first because I've never been robbed before. <laughs> Second, because although they, although they took my purse, they did not take my life. Third, because although they took my all, it was not much. And fourth, because it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. I love that outlook, and that's the kind of outlook that I want to have, even in difficult and terrible situations, finding things to be thankful for. And, you know, God says to do that. He says to be thankful in every situation. Somebody said um, once said, if you can't be thankful for what you receive, be thankful for what you escape. Mm. And, you know, I was reminded through that as I was studying this week about this, 
there are so many things that we probably don't even know yeah. that we've been guard God has guarded us and guided us through situations that maybe something could have happened and instead his hand has been on us mm -hmm. and he has helped us to escape a situation and so we have to be thankful for that as well you know there's always so much to be thankful for and it's important to remember those things it, it's important um, to be thankful Charles Jefferson said gratitude is born in hearts that take time to count up past mercies mm -hmm. and i love that you know i love the old hymn count your many blessings mm -hmm. name them one by one it's so important for us to remember the ways that god has blessed us so katie thinking about that what are some practical ways that we can yeah. count up god's blessings every day remember god's blessings in our everyday life yeah well again going back to the prayer journal you know i think if we're very specific about our prayers and we journal them and we write them down, that really helps us to be able to count our blessings. Yeah. You know, yeah. so many times I think if we're not careful, we can just chalk things up to coincidence. Yeah. We can think, wow, I'm so glad that happened and really forget that's something mm -hmm. that we've been praying about. And so I really feel like it's very important to be specific and write it down. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I frequently flip back through my prayer journal and look at what I've been praying for and see how yeah. God has answered those and how he's blessed me. And so be very specific um, and write it down. Nancy Lee DeMoss, again, has said, to recognize what we receive each day, our hearts must be open and alert. Mm. So we really have to be mindful and looking for those things and being um, intentional to yeah. recognize the blessings yeah. um, that he has given us. You know, when we're mindful to be thankful and look for those things, we, we squeeze out entitlement, bitterness, and mm. negativity in our life. And you know, I love that. I love the truth that the more I feel with thankfulness, the more those things are gonna yeah. go out of my life. Mm -hmm. And so um, just be intentional to do that. Next, just make thankfulness a habit. Um, I read a story of a man who every morning before he got out of bed, he just immediately thanked the Lord for 10 things. Mm -hmm. And I love that because I feel like that just centers your mind on thankfulness and prepares the way for you just to be looking around you mm -hmm. throughout the day yeah. for things that you can be thankful for, yeah. you know? Um, the next thing is to be mindful to repent and be aware of your complaining. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're not careful, we do not realize how much we are complaining and not counting our blessings. You know, um, we do not want to become callous in this area because if we do, before we know it, we've become negative Nancy who always has something critical mm -hmm. to say about everything. And that's really not what we as believers want to be. Um, guard against the spirit of entitlement. Like we talked about, we live in a land of prosperity where we are taught um, we deserve more. You you know, we're taught like yeah. you want a better job, a better car, a better home, a better church, a better mm -hmm. everything. And so we really have to guard against that and instead count our blessings and be thankful for what we have now. Don't always be yeah. looking for more. So guard against that. Um, it's really important that we remember that we are debtors and, mm -hmm. you know, we um, have been giving you know a gift that we cannot repay yeah. and and god yeah. just truly in the salvation that he has offered us is more than we deserve but he's so rich in his mercy he gives us so much more mm -hmm. than that so just remembering yes. that yes and being um careful to watch for that the next one is sing praises to the lord mm -hmm. you know scripture talks about this so much and even as i was looking over that for this I just was astounded at how much it talks about that. Mm -hmm. Like it talks over and over again about just singing praises to the Lord. And you know, there are so many powerful hymns. Mm -hmm. um, and Psalm 727, it says, I will sing praises of the name of the Lord most high. Psalm 6930 says, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him in thanksgiving. You know, it's just powerful. Mm -hmm. And I find that when you're down and when you're feeling ungrateful and maybe not feeling so blessed that day, mm -hmm. um, if you will just sing praises to the Lord and maybe think about some of those hymns yeah. that you know, it will really bring about a spirit of thankfulness in your life. Yes, I, I love that. Uh, as we wrap up today, I think the last way that we can see to cultivate a grateful heart is by relaying God's goodness to people. You know, once we do recognize that it has always been God and mm -hmm. then we remember all of God's blessings, the next natural thing to do is just tell people. I mean, this should just overflow from our hearts and our lives because we are so thankful. In verse 13, Moses tells the people, he says, you shall fear the Lord your God and serve him and shall swear by his name. You know, we need to acknowledge to everyone around us uh, who he is and just how good he has been. Uh, for the ladies in my class, I know they've heard this story before, and I think Drew may have told it a couple weeks ago um, in church, but um, when we were first married, we were on our honeymoon, and we found this cute little restaurant that we said, you know what, let's, let's go to this romantic little restaurant for dinner tonight. And so we went in, and I mean, the place was packed. 
there were so many people in there and they placed us smack dab in the middle of the restaurant and we got our table and we sat down and we just got to eating we were just having such a good time when all of a sudden he got this look on his face <laughs> And I know that look, and I know when he gets that look to be scared. I didn't know it then, though. Um, so he gets this look on his face, and all of a sudden, he just pushes his chair back from the table, and he stands up in his chair in the middle of the restaurant. And immediately, um, I look at him, and I say, what are you doing? Sit down. What are you doing? And he just yells out as loud as he can, which you know how loud Drew is. Mm -hmm. He yells out. I just got married and I love this woman and I wanted to think underneath the table I was so embarrassed and I'm pretty sure I probably told him sit down right now and he sat down and he just looked so pleased with himself and I said why in the world did you just do that and he looked at me and he said babe because I love you and I want everybody to know it and I mean, it's hard to stay mad at him when he says something like that. But you know, that's the way we should be too. Yeah. I mean, when God has blessed us so richly and he continues to do so many good things in our lives, we should be telling people about it. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a, power, a, a testimony, a personal testimony is a very powerful thing. Mm -hmm. And when people hear how good God is, that makes them want to know him. And so we should be very careful um, to tell people about just how good he is. You know, when gratefulness overflows in our hearts, um, it should be an outpouring through our lips. Mm -hmm. When he does something good for us, we should turn around and tell people. You know, it's very easy for us to tell people when we go to the mall. I mean, we haven't been going to the mall lately, but when we're able to go to the mall as ladies, what do we do when we see a great sale? Well, I text you and I'm like, hey, Bath and Body, you gotta go there. There's this great sale. I mean, whatever it is, when we experience something good, our first inclination is to share it with people. Mm -hmm. You know, how much more should we be ready to relay and tell the good things that God has done for us? We should be doing that every day. So thinking about that, Katie, yeah. you know, how do we do that? What does that look like in our lives? Yeah, well, the first thing I would say is just make a choice not to complain and not to be critical, yeah. you know, about yeah. your problems. When we do that, we really um, take away from the blessings that God mm -hmm. has blessed us with. Mm -hmm. um, so a prayer of mine is, Lord, just put a guard over my mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. know that thankfulness truly starts in my heart and overflows, but I still just pray that the Lord would guard me from being mm -hmm. critical or complaining about things that he's blessed me with. Um, even if I don't like every single thing about it. So yeah. really just make that choice not to do that. And even in that way, you're testifying of his goodness by just being someone who you will not hear complain. Right. Yeah. Um, the next thing that I really like is um, in this book that I've read, this is one of my favorite authors. Um, it's Sally Clarkson, and this is called The Life-Giving Home. And in this book, she just kind of goes through things to do with your family. Mm. And so this is kind of more of a way to testify to your family, but I love this. Um, they have something in their family and it's called Family Remembrance Day. And her children are grown now, um, but she, her and her husband fly them home for mm. this occasion one day every year. It's the same day, it's their annual family holiday. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they have the same passage in Joshua that they read each year. And then as a family, they go around and they tell how the Lord has blessed them that year. Very specific mm. things, ways that he's provided, blessings he's done in their lives, mm. and just things that he's done. And I love that so much because I really think it's important that we tell our kids and we yeah. tell our family, hey, look, let me tell you what God did. Let me tell yeah. you about this blessing. Let me, you know, no matter how big or how small it is, just testify mm -hmm. of his goodness. And so I love that. And my family really wants to implement that mm -hmm. in our life. Um, the next thing is just testify, you yeah. know, as you shared, um, I don't know how many of you ladies joined us um, in the fall for our women's retreat, but this was our theme. Mm -hmm. And it's because as a women's ministry, we had talked about it and really with all that God has done for us, like how could we not testify mm -hmm. of his goodness? And we yeah. really wanted to challenge women to do that. And so I really would just challenge women, you know, in your daily life, just look for natural ways yeah. to tell people. No matter how big or how small the blessing is, just share mm -hmm. what God has done for you and um, just look for ways to do that. Um, Psalm 8 1 says, I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. Mm -hmm. I will tell of all his wonderful deeds. So testify and don't keep quiet about yeah. your blessings. I love that. Yeah, these are great, great tips. And before we close up today, I do want to point out um, we've referred to this book a lot today. Yeah. And I just have to share it because this is probably um, the most impactful book in my life, aside from the Bible. 
um, that has impacted me on choosing gratitude. Mm -hmm. And it is called Choosing Gratitude, Your Journey to Joy, and it's by Nancy Lee DeMoss. And it has so many practical applications about how to choose gratitude and the dangers in ingratitude mm -hmm. and just what a Christian life looks like that is thankful and grateful. And um, we should all be striving for that. One of the things I love about this book is um, in the back of the book, it has a 30-day guide. It's a devotional um, so that when you get done with it, you can begin this devotional and it kind of helps you through implementing gratitude into your life so that it becomes, like we said at the beginning of this, it's a lifestyle now. It's not just something that we occasionally say thank you for or we write a thank you note. No, it's a way of life because um, we're taking time to cultivate it in our mm -hmm. hearts and lives. So I just had to um, talk about that because if you find yourself in a place of ungratefulness or it's difficult for you to find yourself content that's a great great book yeah well thanks for sharing that Stacy I've actually read the book as well and it impacted me greatly mm. as well I love that book um, but as we close today let's just kind of do a self-evaluation and ask ourselves you know how often do I recognize God's hand in my life mm. and am I taking time daily to remember specific things that God is doing in my life specific blessings that he is blessing me with and then am I relaying God's goodness to others? Mm -hmm. Am I testifying? Don't keep quiet about that. So all of these things will really help us to cultivate a grateful heart, which is so important mm -hmm. for us as believers. You know, um, it's so much more than just saying thank you every now and yeah. again. Like you said, it's a way of life and it really speaks volumes to those around yeah. us. So our challenge for you this week is for you to share with at least one person in your life a blessing hmm. that God has done in your life or something that he's doing in your life. So we challenge you to do that this week, and we asked our ladies of Fayette to do that. And so we're going to watch and see what they had to say. I was asked to talk about a time when it was clear that God's hand was in my life. When I thought about that, I said, wow. God's blessed me so much. He's so amazing, and he guides me every day. But several years ago, I was flying back to Houston from Memphis after spending a weekend here for my grandson, my only grandson at that time's birthday. And I was just really sad. I got on the plane, I sat down, we took off. And I opened the window of the plane and as I looked out, I saw these magnificent white clouds. And as I did that, I was wiping the tears from my cheek. And I said, God, I'm really sad. I said, but I need a plan. As I sat there and I talked to God, I realized that I needed to resign my position in Houston and I needed to move back to Memphis, especially since I was expecting another or my second grandchild. I made that decision that night on that airplane, and I never looked back. I got up Monday morning, I went into the office, I called my boss and asked for a meeting. He was out of the country, but he said, sure, Diane, let's have lunch on Friday. Friday morning, after a long week of me asking, you know, all kinds of questions to myself, um, I went into my office, I turned on my computer, and the second email that I read was an email from the HR department in Copenhagen. And it was offering a severance package to directors and above, not just a severance package, a very generous package when I hadn't seen my whole 35 years. Uh, I just read it over and over. I took my hands off the keyboard, I put my head down, and I just thanked God. I said, I know that this is your plan. I got up from my desk, I took that email, knocked on my boss's door, walked in and said, I'm taking this severance package. And he looked at me and he said, if that's what you want, Diane, we will make it work. And he did. I never looked back, and I've never been happier. And I just want to refer everybody to Matthew 7, 7 that said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And that's what God does. He's amazing. And he has done so much for me that I just can't begin to tell you everything. I just have to praise him for that. Thank you.
Hi ladies, I'm on my lunch break, but I just wanted to take a minute and share with you some words of encouragement. Uh, about 13 years ago, my husband and I moved out to Oakland. We had a middle schooler and we were both working uh, great jobs and had a good uh, life ahead of us. And then my husband almost lost his life through an accident and we were reset in our lives in every way possible emotionally physically financially to the point where we really were broke down and uh, made to rely on the Lord you know it wasn't our own abilities any longer that carried us through the day but it was a reliance that put him first um, my husband has recovered um, and he continues to work through uh, a lot of pain and a lot of uh, discomfort in his life and he um, thankfully is still with us and so we've made it through on the other side but I can tell you not without some scars and um, some retraining as individuals and so here we are and um, the amazing part throughout this whole thing is our financial debt mounted during this time and we were uh, totally reliant on uh, friends family neighbors church members you name it and then when uh, a settlement came through it was for the exact amount that we owed and so the Lord gave us not one dollar more and not one penny less so I wanted to share that with you and I hope that you have the opportunity to know the Lord as your personal Savior and I just want to share with you that he does wipe slates clean and you can start new every day I love y'all and I miss you so much